Another friendly neighbors and welcome back to our channel. I did this exact same video last year except instead of 21 things we went over 20 things as it was 2020. This is how time works and I had a lot of fun filming that video. So I wanted to do the same thing this year. I think this video is an awesome opportunity for me because it gives me a chance to look back on everything that's changed in regards to my ferret care and what I've learned in the last year. And it also might give you guys some ideas of things that you haven't thought about or maybe you'll learn a thing or two as well. I've always been a really strong advocate for allowing animal care to change and evolve as time goes on. We are constantly learning new things and trying new things and seeing the effects of new things on our pets, and so it's just natural that pet care is going to evolve and change as we go. So I think looking back on the things that I have learned and changed really helps to promote the idea that change is good and it is okay. Anyway. What the heck is up here? I think Andromeda wants to be put down. Anyway. Let yourself adapt and change, it is fine. Explore new ways of thinking with animal care. And right now I'm gonna be going over the things that I learned and what changed in my pet care over the last year. Oh, I just noticed that my, my uh, braids are uneven. That's gonna bother someone, but not me. These are gonna be in no particular order. They're just in the order that I thought of them and wrote them down in. Some of them have to do with things that I learned. Others have to do with care practices that changed. And some of them are a couple of new products that I found and started using and I really, really like. I'm just gonna start with the list or I will never stop talking. The first thing I learned about ferrets in 2021 is the beauty of air purifiers. I hadn't used an air purifier previously just because I hadn't really felt the need for it, but when I moved into my new house and my ferrets were in a slightly more confined space, I really noticed the air quality not being super great. I also moved in with my parents and they aren't used to the smell of ferrets, so for them it was a whole big thing that they kind of had to get used to where I was already used to it since I've owned ferrets for five years. So the best thing that I could think to do was to just buy an air purifier and see how that worked out. I've been using my air purifier for about seven months now and I definitely notice a difference in the air quality when I do have it on versus when I don't. If I'm being honest, I am actually not super sure that it does much for the smell. And the air purifier I use is a quite good quality one. It was recommended to me by a few people when I initially was researching air purifiers and trying to find out which one I wanted to get. So it's not like I'm using a low quality one. I don't really know how to describe what it does for the air, but it kind of just makes it feel less like stuffy, I guess, which I assume is the point because it's supposed to like clean bad stuff out of the air and make it more purified. The second thing I learned about ferrets, which is another new product that I started using, was the litter locker. Now, originally I had no idea what this product was, I didn't know what it did, and then I watched one of Ferret Tales videos where she goes through her daily ferret care routine, and she showed a clip where she had a litter locker, and that got me kind of curious about them. I started working a new job, and we sold them at my new work, so I figured, hey, let me spend the $20 and see how I like it. And I like it a lot! It's actually right there, in the background. I keep it over there in my shelf. I don't know if you can actually see it. Maybe you can. Maybe you hear. It's right there. Yeah, that's my litter locker. If you don't know what a litter locker is, it's basically something that you just put your dirty litter in and it's got like a sealed bag that helps keep the smell in. What I like about it is it just makes it more convenient to clean litter. I don't have to bring my garbage bag into the garage every single week. And I also feel like it helps limit the amount of plastic that I'm using. Instead of using a plastic bag every time I'm cleaning my litter boxes. I use a plastic bag that lasts me about five days to a week, depending on how dirty my litter boxes get. And it's also just like really convenient to fill and use. And I don't know, I'm just a big fan of it. Just a fun little product that I like. The third thing I learned about in 2021 was the magic of using salmon or fish oil when you are trimming your ferret's nails. Before this year, I was not the sole caregiver of my ferrets. I was still the primary caregiver. I did almost everything, but I did have someone else there to help me with the little things like holding my ferrets when I'm trimming their nails and stuff like that. The first time I had to cut my ferrets nails when it was just me doing it, I really struggled because it's very hard to scruff a ferret and cut their nails at the same time. So I gave the old salmon oil on the belly hack a try and oh my god it is so much easier even than having someone scruff them they just don't move at all they just sit there and let you cut their nails and it is the easiest thing i can even file their nails most of the time which is something that i like to do so that they're not quite as sharp when i'm done but yeah if you're cutting your ferret's nails i definitely recommend this as the easiest way to cut them before anything else including doing it in their sleep and having someone else hold them it's just really easy. 
One of the major things that I learned a lot about this year that I spent a lot of time focusing on was kibble and commercial feeding for ferrets. I went on a bit of a deep dive a couple months ago and I made a few videos on the subject. I spend a lot of time around pet food in my not YouTube job because I do work at a pet food store. That's what sort of started my introduction into commercial feeding and a less raw approach to feeding ferrets. I just spent like so much of my day reading food labels and it really made me aware of the difference between crappy quality food and high quality food. I'm still doing research on it and I'm still learning more as I go because it's a huge topic to go into, especially given how little we know about nutrition and ferrets. But I do think that I know enough now that if you show me a bag of commercial food, I can look over it and pretty quickly give you a yes or no as to whether or not I would recommend feeding it to ferrets. Right now I am working on a really big Google Doc sort of network that puts together a bunch of the information that I have gathered about commercial food and how to find a good commercial food for your ferrets. I have not finished it yet because it's, I, I've been sad, I've been sad lately, it makes motivation hard. But I will have it finished eventually and when I do have it finished I'll be blasting it over my social medias, it'll end up in my link tree link and if I remember I will put it down in the description of this video. It is possible that I will forget, so if it's not there, and you're looking for it, just, I'll have it somewhere. Easy-ish to find. Or, you know, go into my Discord server and complain that you can't find it and I'll help you. I also do have a couple videos on the subject, which I will link down below as well. But honestly, I would recommend the Google Doc over my videos just because the Google Doc goes into more detail and I think it's easier to follow. The fifth thing I learned this year was just more about raw feeding. Raw feeding is something that has really just exploded in the last couple of years, not just in the ferret community, but in the animal community in general. And because of that, you know, we're constantly learning more. We constantly have more stuff that we are finding out about it. I learned a couple little things here and there, like if you're feeding beef liver to your ferrets, it should actually only make up 3% as opposed to 5%. And just that my personal ferrets do a little bit better on bone closer to 12% than the standard or 10% that most raw feeders go by. I just notice it in their stool consistency. I add a little bit of extra bone in and they have just better stool. The sixth thing that I learned about ferrets this year was more about light cycles, season changes, and photoregulation. This one was probably one of the bigger ones that I learned about and I actually want to make a video about it because I find it first off super fascinating and second off something that people don't really talk about as much in the ferret community at least not in the sense that they should be talking about it. This year during winter, I've been paying a lot more attention to when my lights are on and the effect that has on my ferrets. Ferrets rely on natural light cycles to tell their body what season it is to then spark their body to make their regular seasonal changes like different hormone production, growing or shedding of their seasonal coats, and how much they're going to be eating and sleeping. In previous years, I have honestly been really bad at keeping my lights low when it was night out and keeping them on when it's day out. I just didn't really pay attention and I guess I was not really thinking that it actually made that much difference. This year, I have been paying very close attention and I make sure that when it gets dark outside, I turn most of my lights off except for my little lamp by the computer because I'm normally still awake and working and I don't want to sit in the complete dark. And because of that, I noticed that my ferrets started their seasonal changes at a much more normal time of year. Last year, my ferrets didn't start blowing their coats until December and they didn't grow their winter coats until January. So it was definitely not the proper time of year for them to be doing that. This year, my ferrets started their seasonal changes somewhere between September and October, and they had their full winter coats almost a full month ago. They're in the peak of their classic winter condition right now. They're sleeping a lot, eating a lot, and they are getting pretty chunky. I blame it 100% on the fact that I am paying attention to lights. Like I said, I do want to eventually do a video about this, but you know, the lazy quick version of it is that if it's dark outside, your lights should be off because then your ferrets are naturally going to know what time of year it is and their bodies are going to be able to produce hormones at a more natural level, which is first off just going to have their bodies at a more natural cycle. And also it's going to help with their hormone production, which reduces the risk of them developing cancers like adrenal, which are directly linked to hormone production. That's as simple as I can say it. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. The seventh thing I learned was how to make a cage cover. You guys watched me struggle through making a terrible one in my Dollarama cage makeover video, and I made a beautiful one in my Walmart cage makeover video. 
It's still on my cage. I use it all the time. I love this cage cover. I am definitely going to be making more cage covers in the future because I learned a lot making this one and I already know all of the things that I can improve on to make it even better. I was just proud of myself for making that because I think it looks really good. This year in Canada, the yesterday's news paper pellet litter was discontinued. <laughs> why? Legitimately why? I don't understand why it was discontinued. It is so popular here. Pretty much every small pet owner uses it. Why is it discontinued? Anyway, it did get discontinued in Canada. They switched it out for a clumping newspaper litter. So because of that, I had to go on a little bit of a soul searching journey to find a new litter that my ferrets could use. And because I had to go through this soul searching journey, I learned how to switch ferrets from one litter to another. I've been using the Yesterday's News for the last five years and my ferrets came to me using it. So I never had to go through changing them to another litter. If I'm being honest, it was actually a pretty easy process. I basically just mixed the litter half and half for a couple days and they got used to it. I'm still shifting through a couple different types of litter to find one that I think is comparable to Yesterday's News or who knows, maybe it'll be even better. So I don't really have a solid answer right now about what litter to use instead of Yesterday's News because um, I'm still figuring it out, but I'll keep you guys posted. My ferrets really hate eating red meat. It is very frustrating. I've tried them on every different type of red meat under the sun, and I have found that they like lamb the most out of all of them, by which I mean they actually are willing to eat it. I found out that combining lamb with a little bit of salmon is a weird trick to get my ferrets to eat it. They don't like lamb and they don't like salmon. But for some reason, when they are combined, they're actually pretty into it, so... I'm glad they eat their food, I guess. Through my Etsy store, I learned how to make a couple different things for ferrets this year that I hadn't made for them before, and they were all really cute, and I was really excited with my creations. I made these really cute chef costumes for one of my mystery boxes, as well as a sleeping bag that I really loved, and my ferrets love to curl up and sleep in it. And then I just explored a couple different types of treats and stuff, and I found a few new favorites of my ferrets that I'm really excited to implement on my Etsy store in the future. It was just a really good year for experimentation and new products that I haven't seen other people selling, so that's really fun for my creative and business owner brain. The 11th thing I learned this year is another pretty big thing, and that was how to coexist and live with ferrets in my bedroom. I have lived with ferrets in my bedroom before. When I first got Luna and Nova, I was living with three other roommates, and I didn't really trust them to keep my ferrets safe and keep everything clean for them, so I had Luna and Nova just in my bedroom with me. And I hated every second of it. I do think a lot of it comes down to the fact that this is when I was a new ferret owner and I hadn't learned as much as I know now. Their caging schedule wasn't regulated. The cage I had for them was just kind of cheaper and rattly, so it made a lot of noise in the middle of the night. And this was back when Luna and Nova were pretty young. Luna was only a year old and Nova was only two and she hadn't been diagnosed with insulinoma yet, so they both had quite a lot of energy. And the room I had them in, if I'm being honest, was pretty small, so that just probably added to it. I vowed that I would never have my ferrets in my bedroom with me again because I didn't want to have to deal with that. And it even got to the point where when I was talking to new ferret owners about where they were in their cage, if they told me that they were putting the cage in their bedroom, I warned them that they might be losing sleep and it might not be a good idea. But I've spent the last year learning that it actually is completely fine. You just have to implement, first off, a caging schedule. Ferrets are so schedule oriented and it's so much easier if you have them on a pretty regular schedule because then they just get used to being asleep at certain times a day. My girls know that between 8.30 and 9, that's when I wake up and that's when I let them out of the cage. And so normally when I wake up in the morning, they are just starting to wake up or they're already at the bottom of their cage ready for me to let them out. They also know that 11 o'clock at night is when it's time to go to bed. And because of that, they naturally wake up around 10, have a little bit of a play and then go back to bed. By 10.45, they're normally already in their cage ready for me to put them to bed for the night because their body just knows that that's what it's time for. Because of this schedule, I don't have any of the issues that I had previously when I was living with them in my room, and I sleep through the night pretty much every single night. I actually really love having my ferrets in my room, and when I move, I'm probably gonna be keeping my ferrets in my bedroom again. I just, I don't know, I like having them around, and it's just nice to know that if something were to happen, I am like, four feet away, and I can do something about it. 
Buzzer training was something that I spent a lot of time doing this year because of my ferrets' magical work being movie stars. If you guys haven't seen my other video about that, definitely check it out. The big thing that they needed to learn how to do for this show was to go from point A to point B, and we used a buzzer to train them how to do that. It was really easy to train them. I just put a treat on top of the buzzer, and then I would buzz it until they found the treat, and then they began to associate buzzing noise equals treat. Andromeda caught on to it after about two tries, Luna caught on to it after about a day, and Lyra never caught on to it, but that's just because she's not food motivated and she doesn't like being told what to do. The 13th thing I learned, I don't know if it's really a learning thing or just a character development thing, but Andromeda ended up becoming much more attached to me this year. For some reason, she and I just really bonded in the last year, and my relationship with her is much different than it was a year ago. A year ago, she honestly didn't seem to like me that much. You know, she would interact with me, she was never aggressive with me, but if I was somewhere and she was somewhere, she would not choose to come spend time with me. Whereas in the last like three or four months, it has seemed like she sort of became my shadow. Whenever I am anywhere, she is at least five feet away. Right now she's sleeping in a bed under my bed and I can see her poking out because she just likes to know where I am. None of my ferrets like to sleep in the two beds that I have under my desk except for Andromeda, and she only sleeps there when I'm sitting at my computer desk because she wants to be close to me. I don't know what happened that made her suddenly decide I was her best friend. I'm not complaining about it because I love it and it is so sweet, but it's just kind of a testament to how ferrets do require a lot of patience. I have owned Andromeda for two years, and that means that it took a year and nine months for her to decide that she was my friend. I'm sure part of it comes down to the fact that she's a rehomed ferret and before me she did have two other homes, so maybe she's just not used to forming a solid bond with a human being. But I'm really glad that she decided to form that bond with me and, you know, I'm her forever home, I'm never gonna get rid of her and I, it, just, it just makes me feel happy. And she's such a sweetheart, even though she still bites me to get attention because Bite training was a thing that did not happen with her. The 14th thing I learned about this year in regards to ferrets was about post-surgery care. When Luna was going to be discharged from the vet back when we thought that she was going to be making it home, I had to obviously get everything ready for her to come back here and, you know, recover from her surgery at home. So I went on a research deep dive just to find out more about post-surgery care and stuff like that. Obviously, you know, I, I didn't get the chance to actually put what I had learned into practice. So because of that, I feel like I'm only at like the halfway point of knowing how to take care of ferrets post-surgery. So I'm not gonna be sharing much about that just because I haven't personally experienced it. And I'm sure there's a lot more to it than just the theoretical stuff that I learned. But I did set up a cute little post-surgery cage for her. Um, and I was really excited and ready to, you know, go on that little journey with her. Dig boxes. I have been through it all with dig boxes. I've tried every material I can think of. I've done rice, I've done uncooked beans, substrate, dirt, ping pong balls. And let me tell you, this year I found the best material that I will swear by until I possibly maybe find something better. But right now, I honestly think that I'm at the best place that I can be, and that is shredded paper. You guys saw me use shredded paper in my video where I make a little enrichment box for my ferrets. After that video, I ended up dumping all of the substrate that I had in my ferrets' other dig box and replacing it with that same crinkled paper. Life-changing, let me tell you. First off, it's obviously not as messy. Whenever I was using the substrate dig box with my ferrets, I had to sweep the floor after because there was just dirt all over my floor. With the crinkle paper, sure, it gets on my floor a little bit. But do you want to know what's easier than sweeping your entire floor? Picking up a piece of paper. Yes, there's one in front of me because it tracks on my socks a little bit and it does end up around the room. But it's easy to clean up so it doesn't matter. The crinkle paper is great. It is amazing. Like I said, it cleans up really easily. I love when my ferrets dig in it, they can like dig tunnels and stuff through it just because it's a nice material that kind of holds together. And it's also pretty cheap. 
The one that I ordered, I ordered off of Staples. It's like the 40 pound box and I think it cost me $65. But that one box lasted me 30 business boxes, a full dig box in my giant dig box container. And I still have another half box of it, which is probably gonna last me another refill of that. So it's just, it's really cost effective. And I don't know, I just really recommend it. Nova actually falls asleep in it a lot and it's really cute because she makes herself this little like nest out of the paper and yeah, it's a, it's a good time to see my little old lady happy. I sort of briefly talked about this when I was talking about how my relationship with Andromeda developed a little bit throughout the year, but the 16th thing that I learned this year is just how my ferrets all show love and how it's all really different. I've just done so much bonding with my ferrets in the last year. I'm sure a lot of it has to do with the fact that my ferrets are in my bedroom with me now, so I spend a lot more time with them and I'm pretty much constantly around them when I'm home. Another big part is just that I went through a large life change that was very emotional this year and it left me in a pretty sensitive state in which I needed comfort and then I moved into the middle of the woods where there are no people around and I have very limited amount of friends that I know in person and most of my friends are online. So, uh, I needed a cuddle buddy. And what I learned through all of this was just that my ferrets and I all have very different relationships and all of my ferrets show me affection and love in very different ways. Oh my God, why am I starting to get choked up? Am I gonna start crying? I'm not. Nova loves to chew. She chews wires. She is my only wire chewer. It is very frustrating to keep everything ferret proofed for her. But this year I found a beautiful solution which really distracts her and gets that urge out in a much more healthy way. I'm talking about number 17. Nova loves beef esophagus chews. I've mentioned these in lots of my other videos because I think that they are a beautiful discovery that I made this year and I recommend them to any ferret who likes chewing. Nova loves these, I buy them for her. I probably give her one like every two weeks and it lasts her a total of about two hours of constant chewing, which she obviously breaks up through those two weeks. And sometimes I take it away from her if I feel like she's been chewing on it for too long. Basically these esophagus chews, they're just 100% beef and they're a little bit harder. So when you have a ferret that has these urges to chew, you can redirect it to that, which is a much more healthy thing to chew that they can swallow and digest and you don't have to worry about blockages or any of that other stuff that might happen if you're giving them a chew toy. And it did take Nova quite a while to start actually eating them. I had one sitting around the room for about a week. I would just kind of leave it there and I wanted to see if anyone would show any interest in it. And it took her about that long to start eating it. But anyway, give them a shot. Um, yeah, I hope, I hope your ferret likes them. On the topic of treats that my ferrets like, number 18, origin duck treats are my ferrets' favorite. I have a lot of different types of treats that only some of my ferrets like. For example, only Lyra and Elara like the Pure Bite Salmon treats. Nova and Andromeda want nothing to do with them. Andromeda is the only one who likes the turkey treats and Lyra doesn't really love the dehydrated chicken gizzards that I make. She still eats them, but she is very clearly less excited about them than she is about other treats. Except for the origin duck treats. All of my ferrets are absolutely buck wild for these treats. When Andromeda wants me to give her one, she will go sit under the drawer where I keep them and just stare at me until I give her one. Number 19 is one that I was very salty to learn about because I didn't want to have to do this, but I eventually caved because I was tired. And number 19 is that there are certain times where you gotta use pee pads no matter how much you want to not and you want to use a litter box. I don't like pee pads purely for aesthetic reasons. I think that they look gross. I don't like walking into my bedroom and seeing ferret poop sitting on a pee pad, but I had to start using them because there's one spot in my bedroom right behind my door where the ferrets just wanted to go to the bathroom. Even now that is the spot they use the most when they're out of their cage. And a litter box just doesn't fit in that corner, at least not if I still want to be able to open my bedroom door. I had to cave. I have to use pee pads in combination with litter boxes now. And I'm not happy about it. Ever since I adopted Lyra, she's had weird respiratory issues. She has these really uncomfortable coughing fits that stress me out like crazy. I brought her to the vet, we did chest x-rays, I had the vet listen to her heart, listen to her lungs, listen to her breathing, and the vet has no idea what's going on with her. 
Right now, my vet and I both suspect that she's just a lot more sensitive to air quality. A couple months ago, there were a lot of wildfires in my area, so the air quality was obviously a lot more poor because of that, and I did notice an increase in her coughing fits. In the last week, it's been a lot more dry because it's winter now, so I had to turn my humidifier on and start getting more water into the air, and I noticed before I got the humidifier going that once again, she was having more coughing fits. If I use any scented anything Thing in my room or if there is a scented candle burning close enough to my room that it kind of wafts in she will also have these coughing fits so right now we have x-rays of her chest done so that if it starts to get worse we can do more x-rays and compare them and see if anything has changed so yeah the 20th thing I learned is just that Lyra is very sensitive to air quality and I have to keep an eye on that and I have to make sure she's doing okay and the 21st thing that I learned in 2021 about ferrets was how to say goodbye to a ferret. I think I've spent a lot of time talking about Luna on my channel. I pretty much bring her up every video because um, she passed away this year and it's the first time that I've had to say goodbye to a ferret and the first time I've been through the heartbreak of losing a ferret and Luna was hard to lose. Luna died from a blockage, and so I've spent a lot of time blaming myself for that. I think it's natural when you have an animal that passes away in a kind of unexpected way like that, that you are going to blame yourself. I do a lot of time looking back on the day she died and what I could have done to change that, like the moment I could have done something differently and maybe she would still be with me. And I think that's where the learning comes in with this one, is that I had to learn not only just how to say goodbye to a pet for the first time, like my childhood dog passed away a couple years ago, but it was really different than the animal that you care for and is your main responsibility. So I spend a lot of time dealing with that and thinking back on when she died and holding this grief. And I think the grief and the guilt is a very natural part of the letting go and the acceptance and the learning of how to cope with all this. It's not a good time, it's a really rough time, and it's still something I'm going through, and it's still something that I struggle to talk about and think about, but I'm getting there, and I know it's something I'm gonna have to go through with all of my ferrets, because ferrets don't live as long as people do, that's just how it is, so I'm sure every time I lose one of my ferrets, it's gonna be a different process, and I really hope the next time it doesn't come with as much guilt, but it might. So learning to forgive yourself and sit in that guilt and know that it's okay to feel guilty because things happen. And Luna still had an amazing life and she loved me and she was special to me. And that's not something that I'm ever gonna lose. And I miss her, but I'm glad I was able to have her in my life. And that's, that's just how I kind of look at it. Hold your babies close while you can, because um, there'll come a day when you can't hold them close anymore. And it sucks, it really sucks, but I love her and I miss her. And that's all I gotta say about that. Well, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Sorry it ended on a sad note, but I think it was an important thing and a very big thing that I learned. So I was gonna put it in the video. I hope you guys have a wonderful 2022. Whatever 2022 is going to bring to us, it's gonna probably continue to be rough, but you know what? We can, we can get through it together, somehow, possibly. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day, rest of your evening, rest of your year. I will see you guys next year when I do something. I'm not quite sure what yet, because I don't plan that far ahead. Have a good day, everybody. Goodbye!